In this video, I'm going to be discussing this checkbox called Clear Area Outside Screen. This was formerly called Auto Clear in version 6. And the purpose it's intended for is the same. However, it does work differently, so make sure to watch this video because um, there's a lot of things you need to know about how this works in order to use it properly. But the big thing is, is there are no settings to adjust. It's just one checkbox you click on and that's it. So you need to make sure that in your photo shoot, you're setting up in a way that works with this if you're wanting to use this feature and not the other way around. In version six, a lot of people were tweaking settings and trying to make AutoClear do something it was never intended to do. And so with version seven, you're not going to be able to do that. It's just a checkbox. It works very well. It's actually a lot more reliable than version six. You're not going to lose bats, but you need to use it as it was intended to be used. And so what the purpose of this feature is, is just what the name says, clear area outside screen. So these areas outside of the green screen don't get removed when easy green screen does its color removal algorithm. It's just going to remove green. And so like this floor, for example, and these kicker lights. So what this is intended for is removing those areas. And that way you can shoot with a smaller green screen setup and reduce your green spill. So for example, on the floor, one of the biggest contributors for green spill is having a floor that extends in front of their feet, which bounces green light up onto their legs. And by being able to um, reduce the floor size, so for example, in this image, you can see that the um, green screen is pretty close to the front of the feet. That's going to bounce up less green light. And same thing with the screen width too. The more narrow you make it, the less you're gonna bounce green light up off the sides of the screen and onto the sides of the player. So let me demonstrate this here. I'm gonna hit remove green screen. And this will add to your processing time. There's just no way around that because there's a lot that it needs to do in order to perform this. So don't use this if you don't have to. If you don't have any areas where your screen is not covering the whole camera frame, then this is not going to do anything for your extractions other than add a bunch of time. So just make sure you know when to use it and when not to. So what this is actually doing, it's adding an additional mask. If I disable this, you can see that everything is still there. So if you needed to get something back, you could just paint white into this mask. You can easily get those areas back. If I option click on, or excuse me, command click on the mask, make an outline of it. You can see this is the outline of this additional mask it made. It's spaced out away from the subject. And the reason why is because the auto clear really can't cut out your player well against the green screen. It's um, the when a green screen program runs, it makes a foreground mask. And these white areas are your foreground mask. This is the good extraction algorithm that easy green screen runs to remove the green screen. But to remove these areas that are not cut out, it can't use color analysis to do that. So it's, it has to do some different techniques to cut the player out. It's a combination of select subject and as well as some other smart selections it makes on the mask, but those are not very accurate. And as far as the edges of your image, so it, it has to space it out. And now what I did in this version is the spacing on the feet is really small. That way you can get the, um, the floor is pretty close to the edge of the feet, but the spacing around the other parts of the subject is greater. That way, if you have a lot of flyaway hair or whatever, it's not going to damage any of that extraction that the um, main mask is making. I hope that makes sense. That gets a little bit technical, but just to describe what's going on here. Now I'm gonna show you a couple images that it's not for or one image that it's not for and I, another one, or just, you know, I'll just <laughs> go into it here. Um, so for an image like this, 
auto clear is not meant to do an image like this. I know people want it to, but that's not what it's designed to do. And a lot of people were who were not using the green screen floor were trying to use auto clear to cut out the legs and the feet and the areas that were off the screen and they were setting the radius which you don't have an option for in seven but in six they were setting the radius down to zero or close to that expecting it to cut this out but doing that was damaging to the rest of the image extraction you can cut off bats balls hair anything else so um let me hit remove screen here and show you now what version 7 is going to happen if you try to use this on an image such as this. It's not going to do anything to that because, and I'll explain a little bit more later in this video when I get a little more technical here on why this is not, but it's just not. It's If your person is extending past the um, screen, it's not going to work for those images. Now with that said, it's now a lot more reliable because of the changes I made that made it so this wouldn't work. It's making it so um, bats and sticks that are sticking way out. I'll demonstrate this image in just a minute, but it's making it so these don't get cut off. Um, you're never going to have an issue with version 7. I'm not going to say never, but I've not been able to replicate an issue yet where the, the baseball bats or hockey sticks or anything else gets removed. The only issue you will have now is if you're not using it for the right types of images, it's just not going to clear anything. You're going to have to go in and manually mask that out. Now with that said, let me undo this here. You can shoot three quarters where you the person is not on a green floor you don't have to be using a green floor to use auto clear and in this example here um, the image is cropped but the person still has green all the way around them and they're cropped off from the bottom and that's fine that's going to work just like this so if i hit remove green screen it's going to remove this kicker and this ceiling here. So that's perfectly okay if you're doing that. So you can get your kickers in close as long as nothing in the person is overlapping anything that's not green. You will be fine. Going back to this image here. Now version 6 relied heavily on the select subject tool. I run that on this image. I found an image where that does not work well with the bat. And with version six, there was a radius. Um, it would um, expand that. And even if we expand this by like 120 pixels, for instance, it's still not including that bat in that selection. And so these types of images can get cut off. And also with version six, that radius was expanding on the bottom of the feet too. So if you go any further, you start including some of the floor back in, which you don't want, which in version 7, I cut that off. And with version 7, this is never going to be an issue. And that is because version 7 doesn't just use select subject. It's a lot more smart about doing this. I'm going to hit remove screen here, and let's just run this in version 7. And you'll see this bat is not removed, even though select subject can't find any of the barrel of this bat, the auto clear still works. And if I go into my um, mask here, this is the mask where it's saying anything outside of this, we're going to cut off anything inside of this. Let me make a selection of this here so we can look at it. So it's saying anything outside, it's cutting off, but anything inside, it's keeping and it spaces itself out again. So it works very, very well. And you should never have a problem with these bats in version seven. I'm really happy with the method that this is able to keep all of your sports equipment, as long as it's attached to the person, which I'll get to in a minute in this next demo here. All right, so I'm gonna go back to, I think this image will be a good one for this 
demonstration. Um, there's a few things to keep in mind though with spacing of your objects. So the first thing is, I'm gonna first, before we do the kicker light, I'm gonna discuss this right here. Cause a lot of people, and this is a good thing to do, but they, they like to cover this area of the screen with something else, or they'll use a green platform for them to stand on. So the green's more narrow below and wider up at top. And that can really reduce your green spill. So I'm just going to simulate that here. So if you're shooting and your image is like this, where the green is only this far away, it's getting close to them, but they're still, as long as there's green between them and what's not the platform, like the floor or whatever, that's going to work out fine as long as you keep the proper spacing. And so let's um, hit remove green screen here. We'll see if I actually kept enough spacing there. I'm not 100% certain on that. Yeah, so that worked really, really well. Um, and so I do suggest doing this in your photo shoot because all of the green spill comes from this area typically down here on the floor in these areas next to the player. This is where all the green lights bouncing up on the sides of them. Anything on the green behind, that spill is gonna end up behind them and out of the view of the camera, but the wider your screen is, that's where you get some of the reflections on the side. So your main areas are the front to remove, reduce the green. On the sides here is your, your next thing. And then if you can make the screen more narrow, that's the final thing that will help reduce green spill. But I'm gonna now show you two different scenarios. And one is if the objects get too close, but they don't actually overlap the player. So let's, I'm gonna show off my Photoshop skills here with my lasso tool. And actually, okay, let's throw this mask away. All right, that's, um, oops, that's not what I want to do. I need to click on the move tool. All right, let's put this right over here. Actually, that's not, let's, let's do a command J and duplicate it. Yeah, hold on, I'll get it here. As you guys are watching me fumble around in Photoshop. All right, let's um, say that this kicker is close to the person. And let's move this in a little closer too, so. All right, so let's say you're shooting in your kicker lights, you know, right up on the edge, and then you've got something covering your floor um, like a white or gray muslin, but it's pretty close and there's not much gap there. So this is the first situation that you could see. So in this case, let's put the background color on so it's a little easier to see. But in this case, since in the foreground mask, you had... Um, you did have some separation between the player and these areas. So there was green all the way around them. The only thing that happened was it kept a little bit of these areas and that's because those were included inside the area that it expanded. So those areas ended up not masked out in this mask. So you could always um, go into this mask here and grab a black brush. Oh, 
my brush size is incorrect here because I've got this pointer size really large so you guys can see it in the video. So I'll have to demonstrate. I'll have to <laughs> move that down because that makes all my Photoshop sizes incorrect for all of the items. So you could go in and brush these off and remove those. That would be how you would have to do that. So the bottom line is try to keep things spaced out if you can show you one more situation here ah, let's delete this guy all right so let's say now oh i should have kept that kicker in a new layer here All right, oh, now I got the kicker and the white floor in a new layer. We'll get it figured out here. Um, let's do this. I always have a hard time operating Photoshop and talking at the same time. But I'll power through it here. Okay, so let's say you have an area where something overlaps in your subject. It doesn't matter if it's behind them or in front of them. But the whole point is there's no green separating between the two. In this case, if you had a kicker out here, you're also going to have something connecting it, some kind of light stand. There we go. This doesn't really matter. Just for the sake of demonstration here, we've got something connecting that. So when I now extract, this happens. Well, let me just demonstrate without talking about it. It'll be a lot easier. So let's flatten this. Okay, so now in this situation, you see that it didn't clear any of this out. But what's going on is, this is your original green screen extracted mask. You've got your player here, but in order to make sure it keeps the bats, and if you remember in this demonstration where the select subject cut that bat off, but easy green screen, <clears throat> this clear area did not cut it off. That's because what I did in this version was made it so it follows anything that's connected to your subject. And it's just looking at the mask. It doesn't know that this big white thing in your mask is not some kind of sporting equipment like a lacrosse stick or a big giant racket of some sort. It's not that smart. It's just looking at what's being cut out, what's not, what's connected to my subject and what's not. So. It's, it finds your subject and it says, okay, this is connected to them. So is this. So is everything up here. So everything is connected. So it's um, it's not clearing those out. So that's how you end up with these areas not being cleared. So just keep that in mind. Um, again, use this for its intended purpose. Green all the way around your subject. In the case of three quarters, make sure that it's cropped off in a way that the edge of your person doesn't um, doesn't meet the background. And if, for example, in this image. Let me do one more demo here. Let's let's crop it about like this. So in this one, let me demonstrate here, then I'll discuss it. I'm trying to do a few different demos here because I know all these situations will arise and people will 
panic and say it's not working. Well, yes, it is working. It's just working as it was programmed to do. So in this case, what we have is the person is extending past the screen here, but there is no connection from this up to here. So these areas get cleared because they're completely isolated from this area. It's only where they're extended past. It's not being cleared. Actually, it's being partially cleared because there was so much spill on that floor. The green screen algorithm actually partially removed that floor anyway, but but you get the point um, on that. All right, let's go back to one more demo here. Now, the last thing is sports equipment or something that's not attached to your person um, in the image. So I probably should have had something ready to go for this, but I just thought of this here now. So we'll just make do with what we have. I'm going to make a softball here. So a lot of people do these images where they're um, tossing softballs up into the air. Bear with me and watch my extraordinary Photoshop artistic ability here. Okay, those are some pretty big seams, but whatever. It works. Just we just need something for demonstration anyway. Um, all right, so somebody's throwing this ball up into the air here. And if you just do the green screen extraction without the auto clear, I keep calling it auto clear. It's clear area outside screen. All right, so you see that if we just do the green screen extraction, that does not get removed. But let's run it again with um, the clear area. In some cases, it will keep them, but most cases it removes it, um, depending on where that equipment ends up. And in this case, it's removed. And that's because in the layer mask, this is not physically attached to the person. I'm not, I get, yeah, I guess they're not holding it, so it's not attached. But as far as the transparency mask goes, there's green separating that from the person. So when it makes its um, I just loaded in that clear mask. So anything outside of this area is being forced to be cleared. Anything inside this area, it's using the easy green screen mask. So not the fear, this is re really simple. When this happens, yeah, just <laughs> quick mask drives me crazy. I'm gonna have to go in my preferences and change that. In any case, um, when that happens again, it's not gone. If you disable this mask, everything is still there. So the easiest way is just to grab a brush, make sure it's set to solid white. You don't even have to be accurate with your painting. I don't even know exactly where that ball is at, but I'm just gonna click in here and drag around. And you see that's brought that back. And the reason you don't have to be accurate because that ball is already contained in this original mask. And if you look in this clear mask, you see where I just painted. That's just saying that it's not going to clear that area inside of that, which is already being masked out here. I know this gets a little bit technical, but I mean, it just is what it is. We're doing some sophisticated stuff in Photoshop, so I'm explaining how that sophisticated stuff works. So I really hope this makes sense. I hope you made it through this video because I know this was a long one, but this features, I get a lot of questions on this. So I wanted to make sure I covered everything in this video, but the main takeaways, again, I'm going to repeat it again. So, you know, if you haven't already figured it out from the first, I don't know, 15 minutes of this video or however long this has been, your subject has to have green all the way around them for this to work. You can shoot three quarters as long as the bottom is cropped off. So it, 
doesn't extend past the green screen on the bottom of your crop. Those two situations will be fine for stuff like this. It's not going to work. So like I say, this does work a lot better in version seven. If you have any issues where you have sports equipment that gets removed, I want you to send me those images too. Because in my testing, I am just not seeing any issues. Um, I know there's some situations that could arise where something happens. So like I say, send me those images so I can examine those and figure out why it's not keeping those bats or hockey sticks or tennis rackets or whatever. I want to know so I can make it better. If you're seeing where it's not clearing your background and it's because your image is extending past that, I don't want to see those images because I've already explained here in depth why that happens. And that's by design. There's nothing broken. So um, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope this works for you.